Out to center. This is cranked. It's way back. It is gone! Welcome back to the Couch GM Podcast. Today I have on Dan Sarmiento, also known as DSARM on YouTube. His channel is absolutely blowing up. He makes a variety of different baseball content. Right now, he's been specializing in facility tours and essentially touring universities as if he was a recruit of that university. He posted a video just four days ago touring the number one high school facility in the country, and it already has over 450,000 views. I think it got something like 50,000 views just today alone. The growth of his channel has been absolutely exponential. We talked through how he got into creating content back when he was 12 years old, his story in baseball, including tearing his rotator cuff in high school, dealing with those challenges, becoming a college recruit, and then how that turned into him creating this massive channel. Dan is currently just 21 years old. This is his full-time thing, and he is absolutely crushing it. So sit back and enjoy the podcast, and if you've been interested in creating content, you will love this episode. And as always, if you'd like to support the Couch GM brand, make sure to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, make sure to give us a five-star review. And if you didn't already know, I am a mortgage lender during the day. So if you or someone you know is thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing, reach out to myself, the Couch GM. You can also visit lenderconnorweb.com to hit a home run with your mortgage financing needs. And with that, let's get into the podcast. All right, welcome back to the Couch GM Podcast. Today, I am joined by Dan Sarmiento, who is a YouTuber, baseball player, a combination of everything. And um, the timing of this video is you know, prompted because he actually commented on my Day in the Life video the other week. And I've watched your content. I've seen your stuff, of course. And so I'm really excited to have this conversation and learn more about you and your story. Dude, yeah, I'm happy to be here. And it's cool, like I was saying, we were saying off uh, call before, it was like, it's cool to just like see people in your space doing stuff that you don't know about. And then you're like, they're kind of in your sphere. Now, like people, you know, you're in my sphere now, which is really cool. And now I love just like chatting up and conversating about what you do too. So happy to be here. Yeah, it's cool that the algorithm kind of kind of did that. It's, it's weird how it works, but let's get into it. So let, let's start off by getting to know you and, and kind of your story. Um, you know, I watched... There's an Instagram video that you made kind of talking about your upbringing around like 12 years old is when you started making your first YouTube videos. Is that right? Yeah, dude. If you look at my channel, it was um, made like April of 2014. So I was actually 11 when I like, made my channel, which is crazy. Uh, I just remember that time being like, YouTube, you can post and people can watch it. And <laughs> I was just like, my mind was just blown. So yeah, that's I started young. What was your motivation or who was your inspiration for wanting to start content creation? Ooh, good question. I think for me, I started watching like Madden, like Madden YouTube was like my first kind of step because when I was 11 or 12, I loved playing Madden and NBA 2K, yeah. these video games. So like I would watch a lot of those YouTubers who and then that's kind of what inspired me to start making like Madden videos when I was young. Um, and they obviously got no views and they weren't any good, but it was fun to make it. And that was my first inspiration. And then I kind of got into like, the really grinding baseball and like the de pitching development, like the drive line and like tread kind of world and just kind of dove into that and decided to do like a road to 90 uh, when I was like 17 or 16. Um, that was like my first kind of like vlog series, I guess, when I started like talking to the camera and, you know, like taking people through my like routine. And obviously that kind of like shifted um, now, but it was for a while it was that. And then I did like game day vlogs and things like that and really just inspired by um people who had been doing that stuff like i loved when mlb players would do like a day in the life kind of yeah. thing so like obviously i'm not an mlb player but my kind of like thing was like hey i'm we're kind of like this you know i throw 83 there's probably more people who throw 83 than who throw 95 so it was kind of one of those things uh so i was going for more of the like authenticity kind of thing but um yeah and obviously it's evolved over time but um yeah it started really with just like vlogs so yeah, I started with Madden videos, then moved into the blogs. Um, I also, let's kind of get into your progression with baseball itself. So in high school, you were, as you mentioned, tr trying to progress. You got to a certain point, you tore your rotator cuff. Yeah, my rotator cuff. What, what was that experience like? And what was your goal to go play college baseball? And that was the next step. And then that setback happened. And we'll yeah. walk you through that. Yeah. So I was like 16 and literally I was just like obsessed with baseball. Like at that point I wasn't even doing YouTube anymore. Like I, that was before the road 90 thing. I was just trying to, I wanted to go D one. Like that was my big like yeah. thing. It's like D one. I want to hit 90. 
Uh, and I was just going all in on that and just obsessing kind of over that. Um, and then when I was, it was July going into my junior year of high school, I tore my rotator cuff and I gotten like some interest from schools, but nothing crazy, but like enough to make me like motivated to keep going. And I tore my rotator cuff and was like out for, you know, it was like six to eight months or something like that, that I just couldn't really throw definitely not full speed, but even sometimes not even just throw. Um, so that really sucked mentally, obviously, but then that's what kind of sparked the like road to 90 vlog kind of series. So it's you know, like one of those blessing in disguise kind of things. Um, and it, in that obsession over like the, uh, baseball world and the, the development pitching de velocity, like velocity and pitching development, all that stuff kind of translated into like the YouTube game, you know, where it's like thumbnails, titles, how can I make a video do better? Uh, yeah. what, what kind of concepts do better than others? You know, all that kind of, I'm sure you know all that stuff. So like it that was what really kind of transformed and where I'm at now in my like obsessive progression, I guess. Who uh, or which teams were you watching growing up and which players were you following that you looked up to as motivation? I was a Red Sox fan. So I'm from I'm awesome. from New Hampshire, like an hour north of Boston. Grew up okay. going to Fenway all the time. Celtics games, too. Uh, but I'm not a Patriots fan. I'm a Dolphins fan. So it's weird. I'm like Celtics, Red Sox, Dolphins, because my dad's from Miami. And Miami didn't okay. have a team when he was younger. So he went he moved to Boston when he was 18. So we're Red Sox fans. Um, so, yeah, like Fenway is kind of like my home park, I guess. I worked there for a couple summers um when i was like 18 and 19 um yeah and play like obviously david ortiz and pedroia i actually got to meet pedroia a couple months ago which was crazy and i did like a quick little interview with him which like blew my mind because he's like someone i grew up watching and dude what's even crazier we just did a tour at img academy and the kid who did our tour was koji uihara's son which is like that blew my mind because koji was like a red sox legend in that postseason run like 2013 um, so those kind of guys, man, like I grew up going to all those games. I have so many old pictures of me at Red Sox games. Went to my first one when I was like three or something and, uh, you know, went to probably 50 cents. So, yeah, those are my guys. Yeah. So lo looking at your YouTube progression, you have it in, in your about showing the amount of subscribers that you had on certain dates. So you mentioned that you stopped posting. And then in May of 2020 is when you started posting again. It looks like you're at 2000 subscribers at that point. Walk me through, you know. Why did you stop posting the videos? Why did you start posting videos again? And then that progression of from that point forward. It's funny you notice that. I feel like no one looks at that, but I have that as for me, like it's cool. Like I can see like the yeah. evolution. Um, yeah, I did like Madden Mobile. So that was like, got me to like 2000 subscribers. I would like, when I was 15, 14 or 15, every day after school, I would like post, I would make a Madden video and be like, hey guys. Every day. Every day, yeah. It was like a pack opening or whatever. And I just, it'd be like a four or five minute video. Uh, and if I didn't do a video, I would stream like that night. So I would, I would do my baseball training. I think I was going pretty hard then. I would like go to a facility and throw or whatever. And at like six o'clock, I had to be home to do my stream. And I'd stream for two hours just on YouTube to like Dang. 20, 25 people. But every now and then, like one of the bigger Madden Mobile guys would like, um, what was it? He'd like hop in. It wasn't it wasn't raiding. I guess it was raiding because they would do a stream and then be like, everyone go to this stream. And I'd be like, oh, I have 60 viewers. This is crazy. <laughs> so that was really fun. And I would just do like pack openings. And it was really more about just like talking to people and stuff. And, um, you know, I do like little giveaways and stuff. So that got me like 2000 subs. And I don't really remember why I stopped. I think I just got kind of burnt out. And then baseball yeah. season happened and I was super busy once it came to like March. Um, so I just stopped doing Madden. I kind of was over it. Um, and then that, that must've been like wild. Like I didn't post videos for like two years or something after that. Uh, cause I was just doing baseball and I don't know, I just kind of stopped, which I, 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 I kind of wish I didn't. Cause like, I've always loved making videos and I feel like for whatever reason, just when I, in the phases of my life where I wasn't making videos, it seems like I can't even remember them that well. Whereas like when, now that I have everything documented, I can like, just remember right. like, oh, we went here, we did this. And I remember I did that kind of editing style on this video, all that stuff. So um, that's kind of my philosophy going forward. I'm just going to like film as much as I can all the time. Um, but yeah. yeah. So, so what did you start filming with as far as, you know, hardware? What did you start filming in? How did you learn editing from the start and that editing process and kind of your, your flow and your voice, you could say? Yeah, it started like, well. It started just by like mimicking other people that I like to watch. So I'd be like, I'd just try to copy their intro. I'd be like, "Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Make sure to like, comments, like all that stuff." And I kind of still do that to this day in a way where it's like, I try to make my videos like you know, Mr. Beast sorta or like Jesser and like make it that kind of because you know, YouTube nowadays is all about retention and stuff like that. Right. Um, but back then it was more just like 
I would edit on either my mom's iPad or like our family desktop computer. And I had like a little blue snowball microphone, um, but it was orange because it was, I wanted to get dolphins orange, but it was <laughs> orange blue snowball. Uh, and I would film on that right into like quick time and kind of just taught myself how to edit. And, and I mean, it wasn't anything complex. It was just like, I'd go on YouTube and be like, how do you make a gaming video? And it would show you like, oh, this is how you put the little square in the corner of your, of your, um, what's it called? Uh, camera or whatever and then yeah, the yeah. like going on uh and it just was like those little things like that uh, that i just picked up over time and it just really just came from keep doing it and doing it over and over again nowadays though there's like still stuff that i like if i see someone do it in a video i'm like oh i want to learn how to do that because i want my video to look like that so i'll just youtube like hey how do i do this transition and then i'll learn that so literally like youtube is where i learned everything i remember like we we did like a editing class in um when i was at school when i was in like high school and i was just like why am I in this? Cause like I, I was all the basics and I was like, I already know all the basics, but it was weird how they would teach it in ways that seemed like so different than how I learned how to do it because it was like the right way to do it versus just like my makeshift, like, Oh, if I want to cut a clip, I just do this. Or if I want to drag this, I do that. But yeah, it literally just, I mean, YouTube university, man. I was just like, I was just looking up videos and trying to learn to make YouTube videos. Yeah. And then looking at your progression, I mean, uh, January, 2021, you're at 2,500 subscribers. And then three months later you double, and then four months later you double again, and then two months later, double again. So did, did you find that a certain type of video really caught that algorithm or, you know, what kind of happened during those months? Yeah, it was funny. Like when I was up, I went to a, a, a post-grad year for baseball. So like it was a year after high school with all like, it was like a school that was all athletes and all post-grad kids as well. So we're all like 18 or 19. And the goal was to like, you know, get recruited and have more time to like get recruited and train them and all. And some kids, it was like getting their grades up and stuff. So that whole year was just like, they had a lot of resources at our disposal. Like we had like a podcast lab on campus that like our digital media teacher like mm -hmm. had for either projects or whatever. And I could just go use it whenever I wanted. It was like the building next to my um, dorm. So my buddy Joe and I would started going there and just like doing a, we called it the show with Dan and Joe. And it was just like a baseball podcast. We just sit down and be like, okay, what's, what's going on in the baseball world now? Let's just talk about it. And Joe would have these crazy, like hot takes and that those videos, the clips especially would do really well, or we do like little interviews with like some college baseball players and stuff, but it was kind of a cool dynamic. Cause it'd be like three of us. So it was like, different you know it's one-on-one uh, -on -one pods are good and i really i prefer listening and watching those but the three-person pods are more seem like you're just like listening in on friends friends conversations right it gives you like less pressure to actually interview someone versus just like a conversation so that was kind of a cool piece we tried to like lean into uh, and those clips did really well like for me at the time in the baseball sphere you know it was like 50 60 70k on tiktok and i'd be like oh this is like a, that means it was like doing well and i you know keep trying to post clips like that um and yeah i just kept doing that and it was growing my TikTok and instagram for sure like the short form youtube was obviously a lot harder to grow um and then once i kind of shifted into more like the broad appealing like baseball experience videos that's when my youtube really started to grow um but the short form was like the clips from the pod that helped me a lot um but again like youtube is what i care more about for sure like youtube is is everything like i everything stems from the youtube videos that i'm making so nowadays it's all just like how can i make a great youtube video and then right. i'll worry about the clips like after that but like youtube is like kind of the the bread and butter ideally that's why you've seen the growth like i obsessed over youtube more and that's why it's grown more than like my instagram and tiktok have over the last like year yeah, definitely. Like me personally, it's and kind of what you're describing, focus on a quality long form video on YouTube, and then you could chop up and, you know, pull from some meat from that to post across TikTok, Instagram, the short forms to try to drive people to your YouTube. So, so in, during that time frame, it sounds like the TikTok and the Instagram reels and the short form was somewhat of a driver for your YouTube growth at that point. Yeah, it definitely didn't. Also, it was more just like a validation thing where I was like, oh, cool, I can do this. Like I can, I know I can make a clip that gets an audience consistently, you know, or whatever. Like it was, yeah. I was just more just like, okay, I have that like social validation that like I can kind of do, I can do it well. You know what I mean? Like it's hard at, when you're first starting, you're like, I don't even know if I'm like good enough. And you think you're making videos that are like just on par with everyone else's and they're like not doing well. And you're like, why are mine? Am I just, do I just suck at this? Like, I don't know, but that was nice validation. That made me really want to just keep going where I would like get a, I'd post a TikTok, maybe even two every single day of like the clips. Cause we'd just make so many, yeah. we had so much free time at school. So we would just make clips. 
Um, sometimes we just made a pod just to make clips from it. Like I wasn't even trying to make a long form. Um, so that was really exciting to me to just like see that growth. But eventually once the summer came around, I was like, okay, like this isn't really leading to like money or anything, or like, I don't know how sustainable it is to get like hundred K on a clip every couple of days. Cause it's like, does it really mean anything? So that's why I started to really shift like my focus to like YouTube and like, how can I grow on YouTube and using yeah. like the clips, like directly try to make them drive traffic over to YouTube. Um, like you said earlier. So that was what kind of shifted. Yeah. So then at what point um, you were in college and then you decided to step away and focus full time on YouTube? Is that, is that step how that was a nice way to put it? Yeah. <laughs> step away from golf. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to play college baseball at uh, Zuzu Pacific. It's like a D2 school out here in the Pac West. Um, so I would have been a freshman. Uh, yeah. This is like July, August of 2022 after my post-grad year. And I remember I went down to like, um, the moment momentum facility and i threw like live to like eric sim when i was okay, at like yeah. i was at like seven thousand subs but he was like you know they're so welcoming they and anyone who's doing baseball stuff they just want them around so that was really inspiring to me and sim was just like dude just keep going keep making it like he's like dude i started from zero like you trust me you're doing you're way further along than i was when i was your age whatever and i was like okay fine i'll keep going so that's what really made me want to stop like playing like organized baseball and more just do it for like content um and then if, my thought was like if i wasn't gonna play baseball in college okay i'll just do college and then do all the stuff on the side then i i'm not a school guy like i just like i don't like the rigid schedule and the yeah. learning stuff that seems just like you're going there to just like it's just going through the motions like i just like having like an actual plan and doing stuff which wasn't a very great pitch to my parents when i told them that i wanted to like drop out of school but i kind of just <laughs> did it anyway and got an apartment and just started making videos like more just like and once i got out of school and i didn't have any like responsibilities aside from figure this out it actually like was a really good driver of like just a dr like it just made me want to just keep working harder because i kind of had no other choice but to like grow the channel and and make kind of like at least some sort of income from it um so like i wouldn't recommend it to like kids who are watching to like drop out of school but it's nice to have that like momentum or like no it's nice nice to have that just like driver that means like hey it's either all or nothing um so right you're coming out of it because you really a lot of times get a lot of results out of it um you see it a lot with like pro athletes where it's like they hadn't they came from like nothing really like they you know they it was either be a professional athlete or they don't even know what else they would have done like they don't even have they can't even think of like another career they would have had so i don't know i try to mimic that a little bit for my my youtube videos but um yeah so it was just is that kind of like that i dropped out and now i just do this yeah like full time yeah it's like sink or, sink or swim not having a plan b sink only the only thing is plan a and you just yeah. gotta do everything you can to get to that uh, yeah i like I, even like when i would try to like money it was hard to make money for a little bit um and like well let me think december of last year J january of last year when i was like in this apartment um in like california but like didn't was the views weren't really that high yet so i wasn't really making money from youtube and i was doing a couple brand deals but i was like reaching out to them to try to get it it was like oh man this is like brutal so i would try to like get other mo money from other places like i want to do like real estate shoots or something i was just like how can i utilize my camera to do that and yeah I was like, nah, this is dumb like let me just go all in and like figure it out because like if i was spending you know three four hours a week trying to make a couple like a couple hundred dollars doing something completely different i just feel like that wasn't i know you have to do that sometimes but for me it just like didn't make sense because the goal was to become like a successful youtuber so let me let's just do that yeah yeah i can definitely empathize i'm actually in real estate myself mortgage lending and so i've been doing this on the side for the past couple of years and i'm in a bit of bit of a different uh spot i started when i was 28 you started when you were 12. Yeah. so it's like you know this, this is my side thing i'm hoping to make it a full-time thing at some point that'd be amazing um so you mentioned that you stopped going to school you focused full-time and then you mentioned like early 2023 is around that time frame so you went from you know in a year in the course of a year in 2022 to 2023 like 12 x in your channel and so you know i saw that video with momentum with eric sims really took off and then at what point did you start getting some uh you know foot in the door with some players doing different things at what point did the university tours the behind the scenes all that start happening 
Dude, yeah, like going into last year, like January of like 20, what, 2023, my goal was like, okay, how can I be like destroying or Jesser, but for baseball? Because it seemed like no one was really doing that. Like the momentum guys do the challenges and the more like yeah. extreme kind of things, but no one was doing like the baseball experiences and like the cha- like the baseball, like MLB game challenges and stuff like that. So I was just like, man, this is like wide open and there's got to be an audience for it because so many people love baseball. So that's why I really lean into the facility tours just reaching out to schools being like, Hey, you know, hopefully it's some good exposure for you guys. We hopefully won't take too much of your time. Yeah. Um, cool video. And a lot of them have been really accepting. And some of them they've even like hooked us up with like a, their campus hotel or whatever. And like hooked us up, you know, the stuff like as much as they can give us to like facilitate um, like a good video and a good experience. So and we've done some amazing, we've had some amazing experiences at these schools. Like they've been really excited. Like, the baseball programs a lot of times don't get the love, like the football or basketball programs do. So right. they're just happy to like, have us around and hopefully get make a good video so like Oregon was amazing UNC was amazing like these big schools I noticed that like of course like the big name schools just drive bigger more viewership sometimes even outside of baseball fans like who are just like oh I'm curious like what these just facilities sports are fans. Like. or sports fans like if you say like oh they have a 40 million dollar facility I'd be like even if it was a soccer program I'd be like 40 million like, let me see what right. went on there yeah. so like that's when I really realized like oh this is this is more broad appealing than I even could have thought and then, of course, like started to do stuff with like Max Clark. He was a guy who was like oh, super yeah. big, like in this growing his social media. Again, same thing. He's like, yo, you guys should come out to Indiana and do a day in the life with me. We're like, all right, sure. Like, I'm, I have a feeling that'll bang. And it did. And the podcast <laughs> did really well because so many kids love Max. And, and Max was like a big, just like someone baseball hadn't seen before really since like Bryce Harper. But like even Bryce Harper wasn't around in the social media where the way it is now. So like kids just would flock to any content involving max so we really leaned into that and like it did really well for us which was amazing and then it kind of lifted everything else too so more people would watch the other stuff we were doing like the the mlb challenges and like the facility tours so um it was really like three things like three kind of concepts it was like the max clark stuff really helped the um, facility tours helped and then like the mlb challenges mlb experiences where we did like you know the thousand dollar versus ten dollar seats or the combine video so it was like that those three kind of pillars that really just grew everything and also we just like i tried to post a video every single week no matter what and that came with like a lot of like we had to plan ahead and stuff like that um but you know it really really worked out and i don't think we missed many definitely in the summer we didn't miss any weeks but maybe in the fall because it slowed down like the last couple months have been so depressing because i'm like there's nothing to do so now it's finally picking back up and i'm fired up to keep yeah it's gonna be an awesome season yeah. Well. Um, so, so walk me through your, your brainstorming process and how you come up with ideas for videos and, you know, from concept to, you know, going to shoot a video. What does that process look like? Yeah. So Leo, I have a roommate. His name is Leo. Uh, he lives over there and he's like my producer. Like I call him my producer okay. and he goes to UCLA um, and we live in Westwood, Los Angeles. So that's why I live in LA because Leo's here. And also just like, I always wanted to live in California for at least a bit. So that's why I'm out here. But um, he, it, we'll, we'll just brainstorm all the time. Like it's, it's awesome that we live together. There's also like, we are both very obsessive about it. So he'll just like yeah. text me at like 2 a.m. Be like, dude, I got a great idea for a video. Want me to email these guys? And he just like, we'll send a ton of emails, nice. um, DMs, whatever, same thing. Like I have a whole like, I, on this, I have a tab that's always over my computer of just like my um, schedule. And then below it, I just have like a hundred video ideas that are like a few steps away from having to be done. Either it's like, we have to wait until the season happens or we have to email the operations guy. Or like, I just have like, it's kind of like a CRM thing where it's like, how close are we to this video being possible? Um, so yeah, for example, like we're going to Oklahoma on Thursday because Oklahoma State's facilities apparently are like the best in college baseball. That's what they say. So I'm really excited for that. Um, and then we're going to do a video with like the Holiday Brothers, which would be super cool. And our idea is yeah. like when we travel somewhere, how, how can we get the most bang for our buck in that area? So we just went back to Miami and also, you know, Bradenton, Florida, where IMG is, is only like two hours north. So we went to IMG and tried to do like two or three videos per trip to make it like worthwhile um same with like north carolina last year we went to like unc it was like okay we should go to unc and then it was like what else could we do there coastal carolina south carolina wake forest uh there was another one too and we did a wake forest game day video so like we were just trying to get as much as we could um so that's kind of the idea it starts with like where where could we go or what could we do and then like how can we get the most out of that trip to make it like worthwhile and not just be blowing money on 
on trips. But um, yeah, literally, I just have I, I watch a lot of YouTube and it makes me think of ideas. And I have a lot of ideas already that are like a few steps away from being accomplished. Um, so I just we just run with that. We're just like it's all we really care about is like making videos. So it's, we're lucky that we have that kind of like advantage of just this is our thing. Except he goes to school still, but it's like yeah. that's, that's that's his side gig. School's a side thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So um, you get connected to Max Clark. And yeah, it's like kind of like what you mentioned. He's Bryce Harper, but during the social media age now. Mm -hmm. um, how how did you get connected to Max? Uh, you know, how did that work? And then, um, I guess just kind of moving forward from that, I, I assume that you're obviously media credentialed by MLB at this point. I imagine. Mm -hmm. So you know, for me, I got media credentialed through MLB just because I got connected to someone on Twitter, and I just happened to he he read his DM. I jumped on a phone call and explained what I'm doing. So what did that process look like? And then, you know, are you on last year? Where did you have like a set plan for going to MLB games for, for different media stuff? Or what did that look like? Yeah, dude, like honestly, the media stuff, I think only like one video, maybe two videos have come from that. It, like a lot of the stuff that does well is just like, we did like the five games in 32 hours thing. And that was just, All right, yeah. the only thing we had to do was like the logistics on the back end of planning all that. Um, and then just like go to the games. And that was like the, 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 it was, we were just fans in the video. The only ones we've been like on field is like, we did a video with Trevor May where it was like, he vlogged his day in the life and we vlogged our day in the life. And then we like right. met up in the field after or before the game. Um, but yeah, like the Max Clark stuff happened super organically. We were just at like the area code games in like August of 22, I think, or July of 2022. And like they, it was super chill environment. We'd just be doing interviews and stuff like that. They just had us out because they knew we were like kind of like close to those guys' age, and like we weren't like just some old people like trying to film them. We were just like, hey, we're just trying to make more content stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just met Max. He's like he's super chill. He gets it. Like he's a big social media guy. Same with like Charlie Soto. We met him there. Boston Flannery. Like these guys who are they're all actually on different paths right now, but they're still like doing their social media stuff and like all about it. Um, so it's cool to be connected with guys like that. And then from them, we meet other people or just from reaching out to people, doing these facility tours, like we make yeah. connections like uh, Sam Carlson. Um, he's, he was a he was actually a Mariner, but yeah. now he's a brewer. Um, he does social media like he makes a lot of TikToks and stuff. And his brother was a pitcher at UNC. So that's how we got connected for the UNC video. And okay. it's kind of like baseball is a very like, you know, you're only a few degrees of separation away from everybody in baseball. Right. So just meeting more people. Have, have, and just coming up with ideas all the time and being not afraid to like pitch maybe a stupid idea, but like maybe a good idea to people, um, you know, cause everyone like people get it now. People know like YouTube and con like the content stuff with the NIL aspect of it. Like it's all mutually beneficial um, nowadays, which is really like a benefit to us because it's like, that's what all we do. Whereas these guys are like doing the NIL stuff on the side cause they're athletes. But yeah, man, it's just, yeah, we're just trying to make friends with people and, you know, like not like just try to get something out of people, but actually build like long term relationships. For sure. And it's definitely a mutually beneficial thing. All they have to do is give you access and then you give them a ton of free marketing and content and help them share their story without them having to do, do anything. So that's really cool. Exactly, man. And yeah, it's like it's, it's fun for me to like talk to these pro guys and then they're like, they're like, how do I grow on social media? And I'm like, man, that's crazy that you're a professional, like professional athlete. You just have to be yourself and you film it. Be yourself and post stuff. I know, but like baseball is in a weird kind of like, uh, I don't know, having some growing pains where like the evolution of social media and stuff. So it's still a little bit behind, just like even socially, you know, like people are a little bit behind or like the, a lot of old people in baseball, which is fine. Like that's good. It's like what makes baseball baseball, but also like it can kind of limit the freedom these guys have, or at least the comfortability to be themselves that these guys have. So like, Hopefully we can try like Bobby Witt. We did a video with, we did two videos with Bobby. Oh, Witt. Yeah, I saw that work out. <laughs> just his agent like reached out and was like, Hey, like seen your guys' videos. Like your stuff's awesome. Do you guys want to do something with Bobby? We're trying to grow his Instagram and just get more people to know That's who like, Bobby is off the field. And I was like, yeah, that dude's going to be an <laughs> one day. So yeah, let's do some videos. And they did okay. They didn't do great. Cause it was the off season, but like still we have that connection with Bobby now. So it's like, okay, if we want to do a, a thing with the Royals, that's like, okay, like, yeah, what, what do we want to do? And Bobby's, a st he's, dude, he's, he would like, he's going to be a star. Like, he already is kind of a yeah. star, but he's going to be a star, like, bigger. So I'm super, like, optimistic about that, where that relationship can end up and stuff like that. And again, it's, like, all organic. It's, like, he's, he's like, 23. He's, like, almost our age, and he's just, like, a dude who just was really good at baseball right. and loves baseball. So it's cool to kind of meet these guys and, like, hopefully, you know, again, like, build these long-term connections. 
at what point there had to have been a moment to where you were like, is this really happening? Like, this is insane. What's going on? What was that moment for you? Most recent, I, man, it's just been so many because we've been so lucky. Like, it, like doing the combine last year was like, whoa, like I'm on field at Chase Field, like doing the stuff that these guys do. Like, that was really cool. But for me, what really hit me was we did, we went to the Rawlings Gold Glove ceremony in New York City. And, you know, like we, we, we were like the only media people, like social media people there. There was like legit media outlets and we were just like the only kids with like, yeah, like a Sony asking people questions so like that was really special we met dansby swanson we met pedroia uh a rod was walking around i didn't want to bother, bother him. he was walking around like these crazy guys and we got this amazing access to the i forget what the building it was like um one of the most famous hotels in new york or whatever it was just like a really crazy environment to be like at peeing and i'm like dude a rod's peeing next to me this is crazy <laughs> so, like stuff like that i was just like wow we do not belong here um, but it was really fun and it was super surreal. We were all like in suits and stuff like that. Um, so that was a really like a wow moment to just be like at that event. And again, that just came from like an organic connection with the woman who does marketing at Rawlings who like sponsored a few of our Max Clark stuff things, Max Clark things that we did in the past. And then she was like, Hey, those Max Clark stuff things did well. Like, would you guys want to try to get more publicity for the gold glove awards? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So That's it's just, awesome. again, like we're lucky that like, I have a feeling in like five to 10 years, it'll be a lot harder to just like do that and be like the, you know, if you think of like, who's the young kid doing like baseball stuff, it's like me and then the bat boys who do like the on-field interviews. Right. It's like, there's probably going to be a lot more in like 10 years, people who like they could choose from. So I'm just trying to take full advantage of like being like the Gen Z, you know, young, like, you know, when these, they're in these boardrooms, like who, who can like help grow baseball. Like, that's why, again, like going back to like being the Jesser or destroying a baseball, like, I'm really trying to be that because it's wide open right now. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, yeah, just those experiences, I, I imagine, I can only imagine, you know, some of those like pinch me moments to where you have all of these future Hall of Famers that are walking around, like access to Bobby Wood Jr. who's going to be a future MVP probably at some point. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, some more behind the scenes. Um, or you continue to, you know, do, do the off the field stuff, um, these, pro these tour videos, how much of it is like evergreen content? Have you thought about it from like an evergreen content and a trending topics type thing to where you're trying to create as much evergreen content while at the same time, you know, jumping on some trending topics. Have you thought through those strategies or is it all about? Yeah. For me, the facility tours are like the idea with that was their evergreen. Like I still see videos pop yeah. up all the time from like four or five years ago of like facility tours. Cause like people are always just looking that stuff up. It's like the SEO on like facilities for big schools, like facility tour is really good. So I was just trying to get, I'm trying to get as many big schools as I can one, because they're going to do well off the bat and that'll like feel really good and be like, okay, we did something good. But also like over time, they don't just plateau. There's like a slow up right. trend um or even like a spike like the hawaii one I, I i went a little i tried to be a little like more broad appealing with the title at first where i just said like the d1 experience something like i didn't say baseball i didn't say facility tour i wanted to make like a hawaii d1 experience and it totally flopped and i was like damn this sucks and then it like we did a whole hawaii trip the video was at like 60k and then it just totally plateaued and i was like bro that's crazy and then i've shifted i made the title like hawaii's insane facilities um, and then I made the, the, or I made the, and then I made the thumbnail, like a baseball inside the baseball field or whatever. And then just like slowly just started doo -doo -doo, like shifting up and it's getting served to more people and it found its audience. And now it's at like 130 K. So I was like, oh, maybe making it more broad appealing actually makes it less broad appealing where I just have to be like in the baseball world. How can I yeah. make the most broad appealing within the baseball world? So that's kind of where that's been my thought process since then. Um, but YouTube's awesome where it's like, if the video is good, it'll keep showing it to people and keep trying to find an audience for it and sometimes it'll spike sometimes it'll plateau but you can always like go back change thumbnails change titles and just try to like find a way to make a video keep getting served to like a newer audience or more people um but yeah like again trending topics is important i try to think of where we've done that like i guess we haven't it's more evergreen i'd say i guess like i was thinking the combine because when the combine happened but the combine one still goes up to this day and like that's yeah. some that, that video did really well off the bat, but it's still doing well over time. So I think nowadays, or sorry, in this season, we might do some more like trending stuff with like the Dodgers and Shohei. And like, there's so many ways we could probably go. Um, yeah. But I think Evergreen 
is I don't know if a video is good, it'll do well. So I'm trying to think of just like more good ideas that'll do well now and also keep doing well forever. Yeah. Have you found, so uh, you mentioned that you changed the title and the thumbnail on that video. Have you done that in the past with various other videos? Do you do that every, every so often you go through your old videos, see how they're doing and then you update things or was that kind of a one-off? I do it a lot. Like I remember one time I, um, this was like probably this time last year, I had some videos that like did okay. And I went and like, I learned more about thumbnails and titles over a few months and like went back and shifted and changed them. I remember specifically like Arizona state, the Arizona state video we did, it was like, it's a really bad video, like bad quality. Leo's on the camera and he's not a camera guy. So he like the video is like shaky and we just like, didn't really know what we were doing, but we just had great access to Arizona state. Um, and it did okay at first. And then I just kind of shifted the title, shifted the thumbnail um, to like more what the style we do now. And it, spiked which was great um and i'd love to go back there because i think we could do one way better now but stuff like that where it's just like if it's if there's something even if the video itself like is a mid video or like even a bad video but the concept is there it, you can just like kind of tweak different things about the thumbnail and title that'll like at least reach the audience because that's what i'm starting to learn like the idea and the concept is so much more important than the actual like video itself but if if the video if the title and concept are great and then the video is great, then it's like you just get boosted even more. So I'm trying to do both. But like recently, I'm just looking at my YouTube studio right now, like the Miami video, we did a Miami tour last year. So I was kind of worried that people I had to like, re say it in a way that I thought would try to get more people in. So I changed it to like recruiting visit at Miami's $10 million baseball facilities. And I just did and I changed the thumbnail to like, one, it's like a split screen of me doing like a photo shoot. And then the other one's like the the gym. And I think that'll do a lot better than what I had before, which was just like me in front of the facilities. And I wish I just made that like off bat. I wish I made that, but sometimes you just got to like try things and see how they do and then adjust it accordingly. But like for this one, I changed it like a day after, like, just, cause it was like an eight out of 10. So I was like, oh, I want it to be, I, it wants to be better than that. So it's slowly picking up now, which is good, but we'll see over time. Yeah. So do you use like TubeBuddy and vidIQ to look at your SEO scores and yeah, and YouTube does, actually has a really good like um, it, like internal software now where it gives you like um, like what yeah SEO scores and stuff like that. But yeah, I have TubeBuddy and like, VidIQ. I think I'm just trying to think of another one I use, but I guess it's just YouTube's got has got up to speed with like their kind of oh I, I guess um, Social Blade too. I look at Social Blade a lot just to see what's like trending. Um, but yeah, that stuff's important, man. It really is, especially like to see in baseball what's trending, not just like obviously what's trending globally, but like, okay, what are people looking up in baseball? And usually it's like Max Clark or it's like Shohei or it's like the big teams, New York Yankees highlights, stuff like that. So I try to like remember that stuff when I'm making a video. Yeah. And then uh, talk, to me, talk to me about enjoy the show. Cause I know, you know, it's like yourself, Leo. Um, is that a separate company that you guys have started on the side or, you know, what, what is that? Yeah, originally it was like, that was the name of the podcast. We changed the podcast when it was just me and it was called like, enjoy the show. Um, and then slowly it, we started seeing like, oh, the podcast does well, but not as well as these like broad appealing things, especially on like my personal channel. So we kind of shifted enjoy the show to more just like behind the scenes of like where we're going, what we're doing. Um, we're going to start picking up on the YouTube and just, it's just more going to be like behind the scenes stuff that more okay. just kind of like document what we're doing outside of just like the, the main channel video that I'll be making. Um, so that, and then eventually we want to do like a group podcast. Like that was our goal. We're like we have two or three of us on the pod with a guest and kind of use that page as like clips and then just behind the scenes and all that stuff. It's kind of been like, uh, a chain. I don't know. It's like, it's changing right now. We're trying to figure that one out. Cause like once we started realizing, like, it's all about the YouTube video and like the, the disarm YouTube video that drives everything. We're like, okay, let's just go all in on that and figure the other stuff out later. Yeah. So right now enjoy the show. We're just keeping up with like behind the scenes. We'll do some like story stuff we'll do a like, collab post on some posts and stuff like that but it's really just like me tony and leo tony's our videographer so like it's kind of like that right now but it's gonna it's gonna be something and that was like our our, our t-shirts we did we're like enjoy the show branded so that'll be like our side kind of brand um or my side brand like associated with like the disarm stuff but yeah again it's kind of like we're kind of in some changing phases right now with that figuring it out as you go yeah, yeah pretty much so you've had interviews with Drew Jones, you know, Max Clark, Tyler Glasnow, Ben Joyce, um, which of those, if any stand out to you and how, you know, how did you get Ben Joyce interviewed Tyler Glasnow? Those are massive interviews. 
dude just dms we just dm them like it was yeah. crazy we just like say hey man we do a pod like and i like doing the pods in person because it was yeah. it make for better like clips and it was more of like an experience versus just like the zoom like the zoom stuff is great because like Definitely. you can get access to these people um but what i want to do is like try to take it to another level so that's why like i was just doing the, the in-person stuff kind of like trying to do something like the joe rogan or like just try to right. mimic that uh in a way um so yeah like those were all great i think the one that really stood out to me was the lance mccullers one which was like my first pro guy i like my first mlb guy that I, I we interviewed in person and that was literally at my um we had like this little studio that we borrow at like boston university which is right next to fenway park and we've just joe and i would just meet there because he kind of lived it was like right in between where we both lived so we'd meet there or go to red sox game do our podcast whatever and like we just dm'd lance and he was like oh we're going to boston in two weeks like let's do it and then he just like met us at the studio did our hour and a half podcast and then he just like walked to fenway after for their game which is like <laughs> crazy so that yeah. was really special to me just to show like the power of like social media and just like he just followed i think he just followed me actually like he didn't even dm i didn't even dm him first he just followed me and i was like whoa that's crazy because he just saw what we were doing um and i just reached out to him and yeah just posting stuff on social media just like you, you never know who's watching so like keep going you know that was like what really that was my mindset after that it was like well i just got to keep going because who knows where this could lead so yeah that one and he was such a chill dude he was such a nice guy so yeah i mean uh for me last year or 2022 like before i i was at like 800 subscribers 600 maybe andres munoz started following me and liked all my stuff so i dm'd him a video that i made on him and he was like yeah I watch your content i'm a fan and i was like oh my gosh no way that he's seeing it you know when I don't have many subscribers. So that was a huge motivation for moving forward. Dude, you never um, know. Like it's, that's what's so exciting about it. Yeah. Yeah. So moving forward with content, I, I assume it's just going to be dialed in with baseball. Have you thought about expanding to other sports or is it all in on baseball? Yeah. Like I wanted to, I think I was a little, well, I don't know. I, I think it was a little too quick to want to leave, not leave baseball, but do other stuff too. Then I realized like, it. I don't know, there's so much untapped, potential in the baseball world and like also like i'm a baseball player so like like or like i was a baseball like baseball is kind of like my was yeah. my thing that was like my personality growing up so i think there's still so much work to be done in the baseball world and so much stuff to make and videos to make and stuff to kind of explore that i could and the viewerships definitely could be there if you're doing it right so like i definitely think leaning into baseball for the next few years at least will be my thing like i want to be the baseball guy but with that said there's like we did a video at Colorado when like, Coach Prime in Colorado was like popping. We did two videos actually because we were just like we're, we're football fans too. Like we wanted to just go and experience that. And we had a buddy at Colorado who could got it, got us media passes because we're like we're a YouTube crew and they're so, super open to like YouTubers and stuff going through. Yeah. That we just made a full. They don't even have a baseball team, so we just like went there and did like a basketball and football tour, and then did a game day thing there, and that was really fun. And the videos did like okay. It was like kind of a dead time in the baseball world. So that's why we were like, oh, let's do a couple of football videos. Um, so that was really exciting. Um, I don't know. I think, I don't know, man. I think there's, I want to like do something like 30 for 30, but for sports, like long-term, like I want to do the, the sports documentary type stuff. Already. Yeah, the documentary yeah. type stuff. Like I did a doc on Max or we did a doc on uh, Max Clark called like Generational. And that was like our idea. We went like, Every time we'd go out and visit him, I would like film separate pieces for this documentary as I was kind of like trying to cultivate this story about like how the different generations of baseball and different generations of sports like perceive the social media world or whatever. Um, so it's kind of like a double and then also like generational talent. So I was kind of like a double entendre or whatever. And that did really well. And I got a lot of good like feedback from it. And it has like 400K on YouTube. And that was one that took me like, dude, like 35 hours, 40 hours or something to edit. Like it was, I took a lot of time on that one. And I think I did really, there's still, I could have done better though, too. Like, I think there's still things I look back on it and I'm like, if I had a, a team of like people who like have done this before, because that was my first ever like documentary style thing. Um, so it just got me more excited to like maybe do more documentary style stuff in the future where it's like, um, we're just kind of like in Switzerland talking about the Swiss national soccer team and why this is so important to this community or we're yeah. in Thailand and why like Thai baseball is like the next big thing, you know, like stuff like that, where it's just like, we find this like crazy story, um, and just like live like two weeks in this place and like really dig into it. That stuff's super exciting to me, like, you know, a decade in the future or whatever, five years in the future. 
um because like i still don't know how the viewership on that stuff would be like like my boys went to dubai and did like that right. dubai baseball thing um and it like flopped for them like the video about baseball in dubai flopped just because it like wasn't it was the bat boys they did one but then they do yeah. some where it's like they go to the dominican or they go to just cool access at a nationals game and they bang for them just because it's like the audience is there so i don't think necessarily just like the sensationalism is what drives it it's got to be like just like the con like, like a solid concept of something that people actually care about so i'm again i'm rambling but i'm just that's what i'm still trying to figure out in my head constantly of just like how can i come up with good ideas that people want to watch and then on top of that make like a really good video that like resonates with people so so you do all of your editing yourself still yeah yeah i do cool. And thumbnails so you, i have another guy sometimes like depending okay. on the thumbnail i just found a guy on twitter who's like really good at this stuff and for me it's like i'm not super great with photoshop and the like, creative stuff so like how i'll outsource that every now or not every now and then like pretty often but um yeah editing is me yeah because the thumbnails i mean super simple it's not even really any words on the thumbnails it's just expression emotion you know uh you know having a face on the thumbnail really does well yeah, so I like, kind of, it's like the Mr. Beast kind of stuff, you know? Or yeah, like the, yeah sure. it's, I like having it being like a scene from the video, but like a more sensational scene from the video that makes you want to be like, oh, I want to like close this loop. Like, oh, like I see the title, I see the thumbnail, like this is, this is interesting. And then you get the satisfaction of like clicking on the video and being like, okay, is this actually what they say it is? And ideally, exactly. yeah. delivering on the video or on the thumbnail and the title right away in the first 10 seconds. You have yep. to, to keep the guy or keep the person. Mm -hmm. And then I guess outside of creating videos, outside of baseball, what, what do you do off the field, you could say? Or is it off the field, you're just dialed in on creating the next video or planning for the next video? Yeah, dude, literally, I don't know. Like <laughs> my whole kind of day revolves around like, okay, what video needs to be made or what call do I have to go on or I don't know, stuff like that. So I, I try to, I dial back my, I used to do like a short like every day and I would do that aside for, like on top of also editing my long form videos that I had. So I kind of dialed back the shorts to like give myself more freedom, just like think, and then also make a really good like long form video every week. So that's kind of where I'm at now where it's like, uh, we're actually like, we're batching videos now. So I have a few that are already all filmed and like ready to go. I just need to like edit them. Usually I'll be like, okay, we film them or I post a video on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I'm just doing the shorts for that video or like decompressing and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'll be editing the long form post on Saturday, then I kind of repeat that cycle. That'll probably be what the next like six months of my life looks like. But on top of that, like I really I'm trying to get in shape. Like I got kind of fat once I stopped playing baseball because I was just like not training anymore. And like I stopped lifting because I used to only lift because for baseball because I wanted to throw harder. But lifting is such a you know, you wake up sore, you're like, oh, this sucks and I hate it. But it's also so good for you. So I last three months I've been really dialing in my health and like kind of getting uh, really excited about like diet and nutrition and I like my boy is a nutritionist so like he really helped me like just see like the and how it can even help you perform better when you're editing or perform better like you know on, on camera like I just want to feel more comfortable uh, and, and be healthier but then of course the YouTube me is like oh I should document all this and do like a <laughs> bring back road to 90 or something like that but the last three months I like I told myself I wasn't going to do that um and I just went from like one, I was like 188 pounds, 190 pounds. And I'm down to like 177 right now, which is, so I'm feeling a lot leaner, mm -hmm. which is good. Uh, and I still got a little bit of ways to go. Um, I probably want to get to like 170, 172 or something. I'm like, kind of like a, I can be kind of skinny if I was like not chubby. So that's kind of like my goal right now. And then, you know, once I'm like feeling good about my routine and knowing where I can fit in my lifts and, and my, my, make sure my diet's good, like when we're traveling and stuff, then I kind of want to do like a, road to something road to night like i i you know i love throwing still like it's really fun when we've gone out and done like videos where i'm pitching uh i just did one with bestia which was super fun and like i threw harder than i've ever really thrown before which is hilarious uh so i that kind of got me excited to maybe keep training um but yeah it's funny like but even training would be for youtube and for videos so yeah that, that kind of stuff but i like i love to travel and like obviously we're mostly traveling for videos but i love to like experience different towns and stuff like that and meet people and like just being in environments that I hadn't haven't been in before with my friends, which was which was fun, like trying new food and all that. Um, but yeah, and I don't really know. I like music, obviously. Like everyone likes music, but I like listening. To, like I have a lot of music posters all around. Um, okay. So it's really like I, eventually I want to do stuff that's more like the you know like music and culture and sports and how that kind of like the intersection of all that kind of drives like the culture of society. So that that whole concept kind of really gets me excited down the road to like do something. I'm, 
around that. But again, it's just like an inkling of an idea. It's really right now it's just about making baseball YouTube videos. But yeah. Yeah. You mentioned the fitness. Have you tried out the uh, cold plunge sauna yet? Bro, I, I saw you cold plunge. 5 a.m. cold plunge. You're psycho for that. <laughs> yeah. Like I love Huberman. I love Andrew Huberman. I love Rogan. I love listening to those guys and Dawkins. Dawkins. Like yeah. I've read all the, I've, I've, I read. So like I've read Dawkins books. I've, I've listened to so many of uh, Huberman's podcast, Rogan talking about the, yes, I know how good the cold, I even <laughs> sent my mom, uh, um, my mom was trying to lose weight and Huberman had a really good podcast about how like cold exposure can help, you know, knock down the dominoes to like build habit, whatever, all that stuff. So I sent that to her and I was like, listen to this, this will maybe really help you. And she's like, do you do this stuff? And I'm like, no, most of the stuff I don't do. Um, but I think I, I definitely see myself as one of those guys very soon. Like once we get a house, I think we're going to get a house next year um, with like four or five of us. And I think we're going to be those guys where we're like 5 a.m. cold plunge, let's do it. And yeah. because it's, it's fun when you have other people around you who are doing it. So like props to you for just getting up and doing that, dude. It's tough, man. Like, but it's so good for you. It's like mental, bro. I'm all in with that though. Like I love the self-help kind of stuff. Like I, I don't like calling it self-help. I like, you know, it's like self-improvement, but um, yeah, that stuff is, is and I guess that's another like thing I'm, I'm passionate about. Like my YouTube homepage is like baseball and then like I, lo- I like watching a lot of like creator economy stuff like about youtube and then it's like huberman clips rogan clips yeah uh, like friedman and the- all these guys talking about that kind of stuff so yeah yeah for sure and i mean i don't do the cold plunge every day but it's like when i i, I try to and it's always a mental barrier thing to where it's always the anxiety of getting in but then once you're in it's so much better than you you know worked it up to be mm-hmm. so um and then yeah i I, i'm the same way it's like when i'm watching youtube it's think media or it's trying to learn youtube things or it's colin smear do you know colin and smear yeah i need to watch more of them i've seen some of their stuff those are my those guys my favorite they're like the interviews they have like yeah these guys like the obviously mr beast and those guys like it's that stuff really like lit up a lot of stuff in my head where i'm like oh it like it's i, I see things more clearly now about youtube where it, it, i just didn't see it before so i could send you some if you want because it's really, sure. like some of their episodes but yeah definitely so i guess kind of to wrap it up um you know to people that, that are out there aspiring to start in youtube or start with content creation what what kind of advice would you give to someone man First, the first step is just like, just the Nike, just do it. Like you just gotta go in and just like do it and like put yourself on camp. Like the first step I'd say, just make a video and post it. Like don't like literally just simple as that, like make a video and post it. And then the process of that is gonna be what you're chasing. Like you're gonna, oh, that didn't make sense, but like the, you're gonna chase, like once you have finished that, you're gonna be like, okay, how can I improve that? And then that's what the next evolution of the video is going to be how can i improve the lighting the quality whatever it's the whole mr beast thing where it's like improve one thing every video but again you just got to find something you're passionate about and then just make a video about it and just keep going like hold yourself accountable to just make it um that was the first step and then once you post 10 a step back and be like okay which ones did well which ones didn't do well how can i like lean on the three that did really well what can i take from those and then do that iterate that just do that over and over again uh and i did that like naturally just from posting videos when i was 12 and like learning over time and caring a lot about it so like i'm lucky that i got a lot of those reps in without even knowing it that they were reps it was just because of like i loved youtube and it was so fun for me and it didn't feel like work it felt more just like this is something that i love to do and like a community i want to be a part of um but if you're really just trying to like grow your social media and you got to like just yeah again find something you're passionate about and just keep making stuff about it and don't like hold yourself accountable to keep doing it I wish I could give better advice. That's pretty much the best I could say. Just like, just do it. I don't know. I also like Nike a lot. I have a, like, do you know, do you know the story of Nike at all? Like the- For the most part. Have you read Shoe Dog? I haven't. You got to. Shoe Shoe Dog? Dude, it's this one, Shoe Dog. I have this so I can look at it every day, bro. Cause this, it just, it shifted. Like it's the story of Nike and how Phil Knight founded Nike and his whole thing. He was selling shoes out of the back of his car. And then now it's like, the, one of the biggest companies ever anyway it was the inspiration was the um like nike the goddess of victory and that was like the idea of it so i have a uh, nike tattoo like a big one on my oh, shoulder sweet. just because i was like so fired up about that whole idea <laughs> of it. um but yeah dude again just like diving in head first getting in getting in the cold water and then just yeah like, right yeah and kind of what you were uh, speaking of mr beast in one of his videos he says you know like make 100 videos and then we can talk yeah because literally it's like, yeah 
people expect to see, you know, that big growth off of one video, but it's all about, and, and then as you mentioned, just learning one new thing, every video, it's a compound effect. Yeah. And I think like I'm, I'm empathetic towards like, if you're 30 videos in and you're like, wow, I haven't gotten a video above 10 views. I suck at this. This is awful. And people are making fun of me. This is the worst that I get it. Like that sucks, but it's like, you have to think the long term. you have to think in decades, not in like yeah, for sure. months and years. So that was part of the, you know, thing I, I wish I, someone could have jammed in my head when I was like 15 when I, or 16, when I like stopped making videos and was just really focusing on baseball. I wish someone was just like, Hey, don't you want to make videos? And I'd be like, yeah, but I just don't want people to make fun of me. And I don't blah, 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 whatever. I wish someone could have just been like, think 10 years from now, think about how far you could be if you just were making videos now. So when I, when I developed that mindset, when I was like 18 and 19, when I started doing my or road to 90 kind of stuff, if I did that two years earlier, who knows, but it's like the whole, like, you know, you never know, but that's kind of just like the idea of just, you just, I think you just got to dive head first. The second you, you get rid of any external opinions or judgment and you allow yourself to be able to just move forward. And you, ha if you have a vision with something and you move forward with it, it's like, no one can stop you. Um, as soon as you get rid of those mental barriers, cause I had the same thing before, you know, I, w I've, I've wanted to start a YouTube channel for a long time. I wasn't sure what on exactly, but then, you know, I've, I was following the Mariners and their farm system and I saw where things were going. They made a certain trade and then I just decided to start my first video. Yeah. So just, if you have a vision, you know, go for it Yeah, and don't stop. I'd say, and if you don't have a vision, just start like writing stuff down that you want and like writing down your goals. And then that kind of can like, I follow this guy on Instagram, Dan Co. He makes good YouTube videos too, where he like has these very simple, like, just like, if you don't, I think he had one where it was like, if you don't have ideas, read. If you don't um, know how to execute your ideas, write. Or something like, it was like just very simple, like one liner. Actually, I'm gonna pull it up just because I think it's really, it's relevant to this right now, but he pretty mm -hmm. much, how many people usually tune into the pod? Like, I, I probably won't pull as many views as like a, a Mariners player because I feel like your audience is so niche. So, I mean, like I've had Brian Divish on, who's a Seattle Times reporter, you know, talking about the Mariners and stuff and that, get, that, that gets a few thousand. I'm having guys on and everyone that I've had on has been through DMs this off season. That's awesome. But I've, I've, I've had on all of the Mariners first round picks from 2023. They had three of them. Mm. Uh, I just had Justin Topa on, who's a Mariners reliever. Um, I had Noble Meyer on, on Friday. Noble. Noble's the man, dude. Noble's, he's a dog. Yeah. He's so that dog. one's going live this coming Friday and the guy's going to be debuting at like 20. Bro, he is. Yeah. I, I was just thought he, his agent was at, um, the live. I'm AD. actually connected to his agency also. Yeah. The Northwest, what is it Northwest called? Northwest Sports Management Group. Yeah. He had a guy yeah. who was down with Vessia because one of his guys was hitting or something. Um, and I was talking to him and I'm like, he's like, dude, Noble is like a guy like he's gonna be like people don't realize people don't know yet but he's like a freak it's funny because during the interview i was like you know what players did you watch growing up or who would you compare yourself to and he was like well yeah i mean uh, probably jacob de grom and i was like i wasn't gonna make that comparison but since you did you know i mean the guy looks like a young 18 year old version of de grom he's also like three inches taller and like probably has a bigger wingspan yeah he's a big kid dude and like he's still growing into his body too which is crazy like yeah i'm super excited for him i remember like when he was six i was at area codes that area codes game i was or the area code whatever it was like 8 a.m and this like 17 year old kid was pitching they're like hey watch this kid and i'm up there with the track man i'm seeing 97 96 97 slider 3000 rpm i'm like who is this kid <laughs> Well, it's 8 a.m. Like, what's going on? And I'm like, yeah, keep an eye on this kid. He's a freak. Um, so that's that's really cool. He was going to go to Oregon if he didn't. Obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, this graph I was talking about, it says, if you don't have ideas, read. If you have ideas but can't articulate them, write. If you have ideas and the clarity to execute, build. And then it says, expand, organize, and focus your mind until your craziest ideas become reality. So it's like, it makes, it, it just it says stuff very simple that make me go, oh, I just need, like, if I'm in a rut right now, let me just read something. Let me just go open a book. Or if I, if I want to execute something, okay, let's start building this idea, whatever. So anyway, to go back to that point, but yeah. Absolutely. No, yeah, great stuff. Yeah, I mean, really appreciate your time today. Excited to see the growth of your brand and the channel and the awesome content that you, that you pump out there. And if you're in Seattle this next season, let me know, because whenever the Mariners are in town, I'll be up there on the field, you know, pregame interviewing players. So I've been to a few Mariners games. It's fun. Have you? Good vibe. Great fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I awesome to stadium too and setting. Yeah, it is, dude. Yeah, I know. I went to Seattle way too many times last year because it's just, it's, I had a girlfriend who lived in Seattle, so I'd go up and okay. travel all the time. She lived in Rainier Beach too. So like, it wasn't like 
a great area of Seattle. But then we'd go back downtown and to Pike Place and stuff, which is cool. And then um, we went for like the All Star Game and all that stuff. It's fun. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good. It's a good city, for sure. Awesome. So yeah, if you're watching this, make sure to go follow Dan across social media. How do you say that? DS Army T. It's D Sarm. So like D-Sarm. my people would call me D Sarm because Dan Sarmiento, and then the yeah. YT is just YouTube. I couldn't get D Sarm, so Easy I just have for YouTube. I want to get just at D Sarm, but. Yeah. <laughs> to you i guess awesome thanks man yeah thank you out to center this is great it's way back it is good